Hi, my name's Jerry. I'm a twin troller boat owner, and I also own this Honda outboard, 2.3 horsepower. It's mounted on the back of my transom, and I am going to today do a full service on this motor. And wipe off the excess. Okay, this item here on the bottom is called a thrust receiver. When the motor's in the down position, this supports it like this, and every time you turn, it rubs back and forth on that spot. Often you're turning this when the motor is under full throttle, so it's really pushing against here and rubbing hard. So you need to lubricate this. So I'm taking a dab of the super lube, going around this section here, around this section here, and you can see where the paint is rubbed of where it actually rides when it's in that thrust receiver. And I have a pretty good amount there, but not a crazy amount. I put this in the down position. Put that all the way down. I can bend the motor around and around and around. Spread that into the places where it really counts. There it goes. That one's done. I'm gonna look at the spark plug. The original spark plug that the manual calls for is a NGK CR4HSB, and you can see it. And it's a small spark plug. This is a 5 8 inch socket. Let's pull it out and see what it looks like. Hopefully you can see that. It's actually in pretty good shape. It's dark out here, that's normal. It looks pretty good. That gives you a good condition about how the engine is running. If I wipe it off a little, Hopefully you can even see that a little bit better. It's not in bad shape, but we're gonna change it anyway. And it calls for a spark plug gap of 24 to 0 0.028 inches. And I suspect that this might be already gapped. I use this kind of a gauge, the circular kind. I like it because it's graduated and I can put it in and get a feel for where it is. Right now, it is just about 26, 27. It's actually pretty good the way how it is right now, the way how it came from the factory. The one time I will use this grease and not the other, is I take a little dab, smear it on my finger, and I put it on the spark plug insulator. That keeps the boot over time when it's hot and cold and the boot can get to the point where it sticks to the spark plug. And that's actually what factory manual says to do. Now I'm putting the spark plug in for the first time. So I get it till it's snug right there. And I'm gonna turn it half a turn more. This time is the only time you go half a turn. You're taking the plug out, putting it back in. You've already crushed the washer. So you're gonna put it back in, get it till you get a resistance, and then just go a quarter turn. Put your plug wire back on, put it on, wiggle it a little bit back and forth. Make sure your wire is not in the way of anything back here. There it goes. We're getting there. We're getting to the point finally where most people want to see. I'm going to change the crankcase oil and we're going to change the lower gear lube and we're going to pull the propeller off, check it for any debris and put it back on. I need to have the motor warmed up a little bit to do the oil change. I'm actually going to run the motor. In the past, I have drained the oil out the normal method to take this screw on the side right here and drain it. It makes a mess, it gets everywhere. It doesn't work very well to me. I last time took the entire motor, flipped it upside down and poured the motor oil back out of here. That made a mess, so I'm not gonna do that either. What is the oil level at right now? It's supposed to be halfway across the middle of this window. I found in the dark or the brightness, I can't see it very well. What I did find was taking a flashlight like this, an LED, and I shine it in like this at the right angle and then I can see the oil. So I'm at a level where it should be. You gotta take into account that the motor is tipped a little bit this way. It's not straight up and down. So to really get it accurate enough, you have to unscrew those clamp bolts until this gets to the point where it's vertical and then you can check it. I've done this enough that I know what it looks like when it's there, but that's something you might wanna take into account if it's the first time that you're looking at this if you're getting a new motor. Let me set this up to run. I told you that I was going to do the oil change a different way. This is called a 12 volt oil extraction pump. 
I've used it on my lawnmower. It is just amazing. You're supposed to warm up the oil before you use this. I ran this for seven, eight minutes. This is the pump. It has a hose that you stick into the motor. It has another hose that you send the waste oil to, and it has two alligator clips clip on a 12 volt battery. In my case, I'm gonna connect it to the battery on the twin troller, and that's what we're gonna use. So let me get this set up and I'll show you. I got it set up. Now this motor doesn't hold much oil. You're not gonna see an awful lot come out. I'm gonna stick this down, turn on the motor. And you can see the... The time that that took to do that literally was the same amount of time that it took to pull all the oil out of my lawn tractor, which is considerably larger and much more in volume. But a lot of this was sucking air because there isn't that much in there, but that's okay. That was a heck of a lot easier than. Below this video, click on show more to see links for many of the items used in most of my videos. They are there so you can locate them in case you are interested. Now I did loosen up the bolts on the clamp to stand this so it's more tipped back and I got a little bit more oil out. There isn't that much oil in there. If I look through that sight window, there's no oil in there at all. Now I need to put some oil back in. Putting oil in can get tricky because you don't wanna make a mess again. So I did such a good job at keeping this from getting such a mess. I'm gonna do something I'll show you. I used the uh, red shop rag and I tucked it all the way around here. I use uh, Castrol GTX uh, oil to put in this. And then I have this spigot and it's controllable right here with a lever. So I can take that off, turn this on, it's, that's in the off position. Now I got a guess at how much is the right amount. One advantage is that this stays pretty clean. Let me try to look in the sight window to see if I have any oil there. And it's just a hair below where it belongs, and I am tipped back. I'm gonna put just a little bit more in. This little contraption works really well. Looks good. This is how I'm taking out the lower end lube. I have a impact driver Sometimes you don't need this, sometimes I do. Let me show you on this one first. Put it on there, I have it set up to turn left, counterclockwise. Yeah, that loosened it up. And now I have both screws loose. I have my catch basin here, and I'm gonna pull both screws, but I wanna show you something. I'll pull the bottom one first. See how slow it comes out? Now the bottom one has this little washer on it. I wanna make sure I don't get them confused because when I put it back together, I want it that way. Now, if I take the top one out, see how much faster it comes out? Well, the reason why I'm showing you that is when we put this back together, I'm gonna do the reverse. I'm going to push the oil in here, then I'll put the top screw at least finger tight in. And then when I pull this out, I can put the other screw in and it won't just run out. This lube is looking very good and I'll tell you why. See the color? It has no metal shavings in it. It also, if you look at the puddle on the ground, 
you can see it doesn't have any discoloration. It's all the same color, so there's no water in there. So water is not getting through the seals that are in here into this chamber, diluting it, which would then eventually cause a failure because it's not lubricating correctly. Now you can take something and compressed air or something like that and blow here slightly, even a straw or a piece of tube if you wanted to, just to make this come out a little bit faster. I'm just going to let it drip. What do I put in there? I use this. It's Valvoline High Performance 80W90, which is what the manual calls for. Now here are some other low-end uh, gear lubes that I have accumulated from different boats over the years. And that's a Lubramatic lower unit gear lube. That would work probably. This is high visibility gear case lube, big motors. I had to use this one. However, I'm not using either of those. Why is that? Well, the manual said to use this. And these numbers are not on these other containers. They don't say anything like that. So I don't know what they are. I'm not going to use them. I'm using this. And at this point, I would say we are fairly done it's not dripping anymore so I'm gonna clean this off now I'm sure some more will ooze out of here but people have asked me how do I do this this container now is this full from doing this in the past so I'm hoping that this has got enough in it but there is this kind of a top on it and you nip off the top to make it the opening that you want. And you can see this will fit there. Well, we're not putting the lube in the top. We're putting the lube in the bottom. Well, why is that? Because I already showed you a little bit is dripping still, but not enough to make me stop doing this. I put this up to the hole and I'm finding that I can't squeeze it to make it go up. I have another container of this. If this is full, I'll be able to push it up just by squeezing it until it fills this to the top, comes out. I see it coming out, no more bubbles. Then I could put the screw in the top, but quickly put the screw in the bottom. This is the kind of thing that you can do, but when it gets low, it's not easy to do. I could tip the motor up, but then you don't know if the motor was like this. At this orientation, you don't know if you're leaving a bubble of air inside here I want it this way. Let me just get my other bottle and we'll go from there. I just checked the recording and found that none of me doing this came out on the recording. So I'm not going to drain it and do it over again. Let me show you what I did. I took this container, which was partially used from previous time. I took the two screws out. I showed you how if I take the bottom screw out, the lube comes out very slow. So I then took out the top one that made it come out faster. I let it all drain. I put this bottle up to here with the two screws out and showed you that it was empty enough that I could not squeeze this and make the lube come up inside. I have another bottle of this. I got the other bottle. I filled this one up pretty close to here. I got my two screws ready to go. I took two paper towels, actually these are them, and I wrapped it all the way around the bottle because you undoubtedly are gonna squirt and some is gonna come out, it's gonna run down. This is very difficult to hold on to when it's covered with this lube, which is extremely slippery, which is what you're hoping it's gonna do inside to lubricate everything. So I put this on there, I put it up to there, I squeezed it until lube came out. I continued to slowly squeeze it till all the bubbles came out. And then I kept this partially squeezed so that it's just barely oozing. I get this screw, I put it in quickly, finger tight, and then I can pull this out of the bottom, this bottle, and set it down quickly. I grab that screw and quickly get that finger started so that what's in here is not leaking out. And then I tightened it up with that and I used my tool to snug it up real snug. And now it's done. So this is completely changed. And now I want to pull the propeller out to show you how to do that and to make sure that there's no fishing line or debris that's behind the propeller that could be damaging the seal that's in here. So let's do that next. All right, we're gonna pull this cotter pin off. Sometimes these are not so easy to get out, but that one came out pretty easy. Underneath here, see this same pattern that's in the original propeller. If you watched a recent video, I bought this new propeller and put it on. This is an aluminum. You gotta have this pin. If, if this pin falls out because you have it turned like that, boop, and it falls out and you don't realize that it's fallen out and you just go ahead and put that on, put your cotter pin on, it will spin forever. 
It, it's not connected to any. You have to have this pin. Now, on the Honda 2.3 horse, which is what this is, underneath the motor itself, in the front, they give you a spare. There's a little holder there hanging underneath. And so if you did lose one, at least you have some there. And I bought extras, and I have those also. When I first bought the boat, I bought them. The issue why we took this off is to make sure there was no fishing line or any other debris that's in here. This is a seal right here. That's what keeps the water from going up inside here or letting the lube come out whichever way you want to say it and destroying lubrication that's inside the gear casing and then everything goes bad and then you got to change everything new gears new seals all that kind of stuff in my case when we pulled the uh, lube we can see that it's clean so it doesn't have any water in it so we're gonna put that in like that and then we're gonna put the propeller back on and see how it doesn't fit there it goes once I turned it to the point where that slot lines up with this, then it goes in, okay? I okay, have a cotter pin. Just because I have some, I'm going to replace this one. If you take that pin out and it's in really good shape, that's up to you to decide whether or not you want to leave it that way. Turn it this way so it's 90 degrees. Grab a hold of the cotter pin on one side, and then the other side. Now we're going to bend it over. I don't ever take the motor into salt water. That's just not where I fish. If you did, they recommend that you're using a stainless steel cotter pin. I change this every year. It will certainly last a year. Matter of fact, you can see how that one's just fine. This does come with spare cotter pins. Again, they're in the same place where that shaft pin is in the front of this motor underneath. You can certainly use that if you want. And the cotter pin bent over, it cannot get out under any circumstances. No matter what happens, any cotter pin could rust. It would have to rust enough that both parts of the pin rusted all the way through and there was nothing wide enough hold it in place anymore it would then just fall out that's not gonna happen so we're done the peller is on here tight it's connected and we're good to go this is uh, just a couple of tips. One is when we change this, the, the lube down here, you can buy a little pump mechanism like this. You can then attach that to, to the bottle like this. It has a shaft that goes way inside so it'll suck out of the bottom of the bottle. Problem is trying to find something that will fit inside that threads. Now this is designed for larger boats that I had in the past and this fit. You can actually put different couplings on here to make an adapter for different ones. This does not fit the Honda 2.3. If you did want to do that and found an attachment, you put it like that. You just keep pumping this until the lube comes out the top and you're good to go. I just wanted to show you that, but if you ever buy this kind of a pump, just make sure that that fitting on the end is going to fit what you're trying to do. This is grease, but you can buy this lube usually at marinas in a little tube like this and you do the same thing you take the screws out you put that against the hole you squeeze this that's not easy that lube that comes out is now gotten all over your hands while you're squeezing it and it's slippery as heck and then once the tube gets down kind of more than halfway you're just trying to squeeze and can't get it all out you have to like a tube of toothpaste literally trying to roll this up at the same time you're trying to keep this pressured up against there to get it squirted out. I don't recommend buying it in the tube form. If you want to, that's up to you. I want to show you something that is, to me, priceless. This particular brand is called Fast Orange. It's a hand cleaner. It's a hand cleaner that mechanics use. It's a big bottle of it. It had the same kind of pump like this does at the top. Over the years, I've broken that off. However, this stuff I poured into a little squeeze bottle like this with a squeeze top. Closes and opens. You can see it in here. And I'm going to show you something. You remember the the lube that's all over this casing. Well, it's still all over the bottom of the case. When you get to the water, you're gonna see a sheen of oil as this slowly wears off. Anytime you stop, there'll be uh, a sheen of oil all around. In one of my recent videos, somebody spotted some on the back of this boat. And so they said something to me. So I squirt this on here and just kind of rub it around wherever there is oil. Now, when that video showed that I had oil oozing, it had probably been because of the old way that I changed the oil. I do it up here, it fills, it runs on the inside of this. This is forever oozing out. You splash water up on the back of the motor and more of it comes out. If you spill some inside the boat, especially across the back of the transom, it's forever oozing off. I have it on my hands and that's the advantage of this stuff. I squirt some of this in my hand, I rub it around. This 
literally just disintegrates the, whether it's oil or grease or whatever it is. If you're working someplace out in the field and you don't have any access to water, you can wash this, this comes right off. You can, as a mechanic, you can just use a rag and this will take it all off. You don't have to wash it off and my hands are clean. Clean enough, touch my camera, touch my clothes, whatever, touch the boat, I'm not worried about it. The back of the boat, when I had that sheen, I just squirted a bunch of this around the boat itself, across the back, rubbed it with a rag, it got it all off, same with the inside, and then I washed the whole boat, and the boat is now free of the oils that would be leaching into our water system. So priceless to me. If you're working on something, these are oil absorbent rag. They're made for mechanics and that kind of stuff. Uh, if I'm changing the oil, I should have had this underneath here because if I did spill it, this would absorb it and it does a really good job. You buy these, I think I bought them on eBay for, I don't remember, it's a giant bundle of them when they came. They will last my lifetime probably and you can probably get them in smaller quantities, uh, maybe at a auto parts store or something like that, but they work really well. I've got that hand cleaner all over here and I'll just take this rag and I'll wipe it all off and all the lube will come off with it, just like I did to the entire boat itself. The transom, the inside, any place I thought I might've had a little bit of oil spilled in, I can tell by touching it, I'm as same texture as it is touching up here. Hey, you forgot to remind me. What was the purpose of all this? Where I said this was wonderful. See this bag? turn it inside out, I close it up, all my oil and grease, dirty rags are inside here, and I'm done. Thanks for watching, come back again, bye now.